why we will never fit the beauty standard ideal, because the mold is always changing. What's up you guys? I'm Brie. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different. We are going to be taking a look at beauty standards over the years, how much it's changed and how that affects the way that we see ourselves. There was this one specific paragraph that I read online that sparked this whole video and I wanted to share it with you. It says, and I quote, the feminine beauty ideal is the socially constructed notion that physical attractiveness is one of women's most important assets and something all women should strive to achieve and maintain. What? And you know, it's the way that women are made to believe that our appearance is the most important thing about us for me. So anyway, that and scrolling through social media, of course, is what inspired this video. So how on earth can we achieve and maintain the standard of beauty if the mold is always changing? The standard of beauty is so deeply ingrained in our brains that it is going to be very difficult for us to unlearn all of the pressures and expectations that we put on ourselves. But I'm really hoping that this video is going to help us shift our perspective a little bit and help us learn how to love ourselves and appreciate our bodies the way they are. And to do that, we are going to travel back in time to the earliest beauty standard I could find, and that is 22,000 BC. This art piece right here is called Venus of Willendorf. It's a very well-known art piece. It was created in a very primitive time in history, as you can probably tell. It has been suggested that she is a fertility figure, a mother goddess symbol, and an aphrodisiac made by men for the appreciation of men. Most historians believe that this art piece celebrated fertility, including femininity, <laughs> Femininity, 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 goddesses, and eroticism. The one part that I found really interesting out of all of this is that there is no face on this woman. But yes, this is the earliest beauty standard symbol that I could find. Now we're gonna skip pretty far ahead to 1700 AD. But, and I will insert some photos now, I did find some images from ancient Egypt of slim women with braided wigs and lots of eyeliner. Then there was ancient Greece where women strived for unibrows and bleached curls. There was medieval Japan where women grew their hair as long as possible, often down to the floor, and they'd paint their faces white and their teeth black. Very interesting. So anyway, I think that those kind of filled the gaps in between that time. I'm sure there's a lot that I missed, but we are gonna skip ahead to 1700 because up until now, women were more so appreciated for what their bodies could do and not the way that they looked. In 1700, we were introduced to Aphrodite. She was an ancient Greek goddess of sexual love and beauty, identified with Venus by the Romans. Again, she had full hips, fair skin, light hair, and a very sweet face. It was around the 1850s where the beauty standard really started to drastically change. I would like to welcome you to the era of the corset. Now, don't get me wrong, women's bodies were still desirably plump and full-figured, but in this time period, women cinched in their waists with tight-fitting undergarments. This was to give the perception of the desirable hourglass figure, as you can see. The idea was for women to have tiny waists and what appears to be a bigger butt, which encourages the corset and the hoop skirt. As you can see, these dresses have the most beautiful embellishments and the women were expected to always dress to the nines. This time period lasted through the reign of Queen Victoria and she was considered one of the most influential figures of the time. We're gonna skip ahead to the 1920s. We are now going to see what is generally termed the fashion show. Really, it is an exhibition of gowns that women can actually wear. In this time period, the ideal woman had a flat chest, a downplayed waist, a boyish figure, and a short bob hairstyle. The waist cinching corsets were kind of out and the straight up and down corsets were in. So I feel like this is the era that I would really have fit in because I don't really have curves. And women in this era actually wore bras that flattened their chest. And they even intentionally wore outfits that made them look curveless. So I wouldn't have had to do a thing. But the boyish figure of the 1920s didn't actually last very long because by the 1950s, Marilyn Monroe made her mark as one of the most popular sex symbols of her time. You ain't nothing but a hand, dog girl. 
thin hourglass figure, large breasts, and a slim waist was now back in. Images from women from this time, I believe, are best compared to Barbie dolls, as you can see here. And now, I'd like to welcome you to the swingin' 60s. This is where women strive to be long and willowy with long, slim legs. And apparently the motto of the 1960s was peace, love and thin. Now, there were two main styles. There was ladylike and preppy or the hippie look. Either way, both of them favoured dramatic eyes, also known as tarantula eyes, and they also favoured pixie cuts. And two decades later, I am welcoming you to the 1980s. This is the supermodel era, where women were celebrated if they looked athletic. But this, as you can imagine, inspired an exercise crazed phenomenon. Now, I'm not exaggerating when I say that everyone was watching workout videos. Smiling down to the pelvis. Front, back, front, back. Push it, pull it, push it, pull it. Yeah! There you go. The hip sugar. Come on and shake that cute little booty of yours. <laughs> and the media was encouraging women to be thin but fit. This era also saw a dramatic increase in anorexia, which was thought by some experts to be caused by the era's obsession with exercise. And that brings us to the naughty 90s. And this is the era where women were told to be beautiful, they had to be extremely thin. The beauty ideal of this era was often referred to as the waif, which by definition on Google means a young person who is thin and looks unhealthy or uncared for. The model and heroine of this era was Kate Moss, with her thin figure, clear, soft skin, and defined cheekbones. Now, in the 90s, my mum was in her late teens, early 20s, and she has told me firsthand how ridiculed she was for her figure because she has a big bum and People used to tease her and make her feel horrible about it to the point that she hated her body because quite frankly, big bums and curves just didn't make the cut in the 1990s. And after that roller coaster throughout history, we have made it back to now, the 2000s to 2020. This is otherwise known as the healthy skinny era. As you know, the Kardashian Jenners are the poster women of ideal beauty standards, and right now the standard of beauty is getting increasingly harder to attain. Like I need to kind of suffocate. Well, it, it needs really to be like good at doing it that, needs to so. be like this, like oh, where okay. my body looks crazy. Like I need to not be able to breathe for like mm -hmm. cellulite proof. I want like a barrier, less cellulite. So I was just thinking like my pose, I literally can't be like this with too much of a hip. I have to be like this right. to where I look skinnier. Women are expected to be skinny, but not too skinny. With large breasts and a big butt, all while maintaining a thin waist and a flat stomach. And we're clean eating, intermittent fasting, and avoiding carbs. We're all boss babes, running businesses, and staying productive 24-7. I'm not gonna lie, that all sounds kind of exhausting. And because of this current standard, women are seeking plastic surgery, fad diets, booty gains, lip fillers, and the list goes on to achieve this look and lifestyle. Believe me, I am happy for you to do whatever you please to your body. That is your choice, you do you, I am not against it. The only thing that concerns me about that is the pressure and expectations that the current beauty standard ideals put on us and how that affects how we feel about our bodies and what we do with and to our bodies. Anyway, that was a quick deep dive into the evolution of beauty from 22,000 BC to now. It's really nice to take a step back and see the overview of beauty standards across history because I feel like being born in the 90s gave me a very narrow education of what beauty is. And my gosh, we are just so much more than our appearance and our body. But I still have a little bit to say about loving yourself regarding this topic and I would love to hear what you have to say as well in the comment section down below. So first of all, I do want to say that to be fair, I do believe that society in general is taking more of a stand against beauty standards and posting more realistic versions of themselves online, which is really helping. And I love that. But I believe we still do have a really long way to go because honestly, I feel like we are being a lot more accepting of all body types when it comes to other people, but not when it comes to ourselves. Learning to love myself is something I have been actively practicing every single day since the start of 2020. So I wanted to share my top five tips that helped me to love myself in 2020. Number one, stop comparing yourself to others 
you are not them, they will never be you. So we really need to let go of what we think beauty is because as you can see from this video, beauty is always changing. Number two, you have to allow yourself to have a bad day, a bad hair day, a breakout, a bloating day. These are all normal, not every day is going to be perfect. That's just the reality of life and we need to accept that we're gonna have some bad days. Sometimes we'll have more bad days than good days and that's completely normal and that makes you human. Number three, you have to focus on the things that you do like about yourself. Um, I started by looking in the mirror and focusing on one quality that I really liked about myself, whether it's about your personality or your looks, either way. When you start focusing on all of these little things about yourself that you like, you might actually start to see yourself in a different light. And a second part to tip number three is eventually I want you to start focusing on the things that you don't like as well and start actively and consciously thinking kindly about those things. And this is tip number four and it's one of my favorite tips out of all of them. I really want you to start thinking about how you make others feel. You make people happy, you make them laugh, they want you around, you are loved. And I just think that's really beautiful. And when you start seeing what other people see in you and what you have to offer, it's pretty hard to not appreciate yourself. And this is tip number five. The last tip, I want you to go and follow Instagram accounts that make you feel good. And I want you to unfollow any Instagram accounts that don't make you feel good. Because honestly, as much as we can deny it, social media really does affect the way we see ourselves. Um, it affects our mood. We compare ourselves to people online. So if you're constantly seeing people on there that make you feel good, then that is much better than seeing people on your newsfeed that you're striving to look like. Anyway, if you're still watching this video, um, give yourself a pat on the back. I'm so proud of you and I appreciate you so much. If you're still watching, please let me know in the comment section down below so that I can thank you personally. I really hope you found it as entertaining and insightful as I did. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a big thumbs up, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future uploads and I will see you in my next video. Bye.